What is up, everybody? We're gonna go over all of these trades. This is within uh, the first 30 minutes of the session for today, which was October 10th, 2022. Um, haven't done an order flow video in a while, and well, quite frankly, this channel was originally built on order flow. We built this channel. We built this channel on order flow. That's right. Some of you are too young to know what that song is. Uh, we built the city on rock and roll. Anybody? Come on. So we're going to go over all of these trades. So there's an older video. Again, you know, we got to go back to the roots of the channel. We're going to be doing more of this shit in the future. Don't worry. But, you know, we've been doing a lot of talking head and the coaching shit. So let's do what, you know, this is what the channel is. And also there's an older video that inspired me. So this is kind of like a remake of that. Let me show you what that is. So... There's this video I did more than three years ago called Advanced Order Flow Trades, what a scalping session really looks like. Um, and it's, I mean, the, the video is still up, but as you can see, it's a, a scalping session uh, on one lot. And I made $137.50. I, I was extremely excited to make, pull that type of p l back then so i mean and this is july 6 2019 so i mean we really this entire channel is you can see my growth i mean what that's what's great this, this is like an archive and you get to see how i develop and grow as a fucking trader um things were definitely different back then too as you can see uh the order book uh the the market orders are a lot thick or limit orders i'm sorry not to confuse you guys. The limit orders were a lot thicker in the ES back then, baby. Um, trading the 2900s, too. Uh, tape was a little different. Um, but, man, what a, how things have changed and how I've gotten better over the years. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, guys. So, this is right before the open... Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually reset the volume profile on the depth of market. Uh, that's just something I do. I know it can be automated. So just I like to do it by, by hand. Um, so th the plan is mostly scalping for the session because we're in a questionable area. Now, I am a bit more short biased based off higher time frame uh, analysis, but... Uh, we are definitely in a questionable area, so uh, I'm more so going to be scalping the entire session until maybe there's some giant contextual shift or something happens, but uh, that's what's going to happen here. So I am going to attempt a, a short, um, based off of this higher time frame shit again, this is an A+. Plus. So you're going to see me get beat up in the beginning. We reset the profile. We're carefully watching uh, how it's moving and how this profile structure is being built. Um, now, what you're going to see me do is you're going to see me start to draw arrows here. And I'm going to pause the video and explain that as soon as I place the first one, which is going to be at the 6250. Okay, so what you see here is a 10 uh, 10 by zero. Okay. 10 lots sold there. Um, and they weren't able to move the bid down. So this is kind of a footprint technique. I'm not going to really get heavy into it. Um, it's basically a complete auction. So anytime you have a footprint chart and you see, uh, some sort of number followed by a zero, then theoretically that's a complete auction and it should reverse or mean revert. Now, I use it in an entirely different way, um, and these inside columns are a, a footprint. I prefer this over an actual footprint chart. Um, again, that's another video for another topic. We got a lot of shit to watch here. So let's go ahead and just watch. So for me, that's a complete. So I'm just kind of tracking where the market keeps rotating. Obviously, it blew through it. Looking for a short that was a bit premature. Notice this, though. Notice how there's a lot of selling coming in as we hit here, but the market is not dumping. It's coming back up. So that is a problem. 
Um, again, so we flatted the trade, we, we cut it, and now we're attempting to re-enter it because the, the breakout is actually continuing. And then it jumps up. Did you see the way it jumped up right there? That's not good. Um, trying to get out for a break even. I'm not going to get the break even. We hit the flat key. We take it somewhere up here uh, for the next loss. Um, anyways, let's continue. And let, let's kind of go ahead and look at the P&L so we know what trades you know, we're on. Okay, guys, so we just watched these two uh, trades go down where we took these two losses. Next trade's gonna be a $400 win, break even, followed by a stop out, and then we start to groove up and uh, crush it. So let's go ahead and continue this. <clears throat> so we got a 68 by zero up there, I'm tracking that, and then the 51 by zero, so you're gonna see me actually mark that as well. Again, I'm not going to be explaining that too much. Um, and again, this is not the not being leveraged the same way uh, a lot of other videos out there talk about. Com you know, these complete auctions. I use it a different way. So now, what's interesting is they're hitting it with two eleven, and it's two eleven by zero. So that's twice they've kind of completed it there. So I'm double up, up the arrows right here. Just waiting for this profile to build <clears throat> eight by zero down here. And at some point these do get stop run. So I'm kind of looking for that potential stop run right there. As you can see, we get into it. She comes up, slams down. That's a good sign. Um, 65 by zero, not going. There we go. There we go. Nice puke. Uh, right there. There is liquidity sitting here, 33 by zero. This is stalling a little too much. Again, the whole point of me is to scalp. She's starting to come back up, so we're going to want to just take the whole fucking trade right there. And what's happening is there was liquidity s sitting right here. Now, it looks like it's gone, right? It doesn't look like there's a large bid sitting there, but first and foremost, 60 is a psych price because any price ending with zeros or five evens is a psych price and what happens in the es is you'll have liquidity here but they'll pull it or it'll get filled or whatever but the price will start snapping back and forth and continue to trade that 60 now is that going to happen right now i don't fucking remember to be honest with you but let's just continue uh, this shit so again scalp it yeah could have kept going but that's not the plan um, so she's obviously still puking here. We're going to continue to just track it, watch it 13 by zero and a 44 by zero, but they start to hit right there. So that doesn't really count. You'll see me start to erase them. I want to see a better pullback when it does that one by zero or whatever the fuck it is. So she's still driving down into the 55s. A lot of mid tape, nine by zero. That would be a worthy mark, most likely, as you can see. It gets marked there. So just tracking it, being patient. Notice how I'm not chasing it. I'm just tracking it. We got so I am looking for a continuation down again because of the larger time frame. And then we're gonna get absolutely whacked here, I believe. No, this is gonna end up being a break even. So notice how she's really struggling to go down here. It's just hovering and bouncing over my entry. And when it gets below my entry, it's not like puking. It's not shoving anymore. So that's a problem. So we cut it for a break even. Yes, we cut it as it goes. But in that moment, things just, it wasn't working. And it, it could have, what could have happened is it could have ended up just slamming up and, and blowing me out. And I'm trying to prevent that from happening because... I don't want to take these big stop outs because my stop outs are about 600 bucks a piece. And, you know, my stop is, it's a safety. I'm, my stops and targets are only guardrails, if you will. The real management is done by hand and by reading the actual order flow and watching EV shifts or expected value shifts in price action. I don't have a video on EV or expected value shifts. That's a more advanced topic. That's another video for another time. Again, this is just us watching uh, the trades. So let's pull this up. So uh, 
we're currently sitting here. We're about to see an actual me getting whacked hard. And then we're going to fucking pick it up and go, go, go. So um, here we go. And this is my first time reviewing this footage too. So I'm not crystal clear on a lot of shit. Uh, there we go. Still selling, still driving. Gonna erase that. It almost looked like a complete. Again, just waiting for my edge. There is no edge in this. And I don't like shorting these fucking things because they often snap back like that. And if I'm gonna be shorting a drive down, I wanna hit it on the pullback. Uh, which I attempted up here. <clears throat> so my pre-market was somewhat right, but I wasn't super crystal clear. Um, she's driving up. Now she's starting to get stuck here. Less order flow. Really pausing. Really stalling in this section. As you can see. So that's an interesting turn of events. Uh... And I'm just kind of remembering what's happening there. I'm remembering now they start to stop, run, and puke right there. Driving hard, as you can see. Um, and also that short I attempted earlier. This is not the type of environment where you just fucking hold shit. A lot of traders are having issues with the ES and it just coming back all the time. This is... In my opinion, more of a scalping environment. For me, I I ran into a lot of problems somewhere in the summertime with trades constantly coming back. And we still are kind of in that environment where just getting home runs to run just is very difficult. And last week, I've left three massive trades on the table completely. So... It's just not that type of environment. I know that if I'm picking up scalps... It just pays out. It pays out better, and that's what we're doing. So notice how she just rips up right here. This is starting to rotate down. We marked that 4 by 0 right here as a complete auction. So there is some slight chopping in this section with a slight profile. Uh, for me, this could be mean reverting, hence the reason we're queuing up for a short. Notice I don't uh, chase the spread i'm kind of letting the order sit there and there's the fill um now this is gonna get a little nasty and it's gonna whack me i'm hoping this area right here holds which it looks promising because it is a zero by ten in the exact same area so i love that double market then it goes two by zero right here and it immediately starts rotating that's not good and i don't have time to react and we get instantly fucking whacked so the next trade we'll be taking a look at is going to be this big fat win. And at this point, I am fine. I'm not sweating it. I'm hitting the microphone with my fucking stupid hand. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not sweating. I'm not freaking out. You know, it, it is what it is. Uh, we're going to be okay. So um, sometimes, you know starting off a session gets a little rocky until you nail it right and i'm just kind of still attempting to sync up with the rhythm the tempo of everything i don't think any of these trades honestly are bad um the first one was a little iffy i sh probably should never done that but i'm doing my job and i'm just doing what i'm supposed to i i don't care that that there was a stop out now i do care in the sense that I need to be aware that we are sitting red currently and what we need to do is um, be very particular about the next trade. So uh, that's what I'm going to do is get very particular about the next uh, trade. So let's continue to watch, shall we? All right, hit the play button. So I'm not quite sure what's going on in this region. As you can see, notice how it's chopping 60. Just because the liquidity is gone doesn't mean they aren't willing to trade it. We got a 10 by 0 up there. Um, and again, we had a good rotation there. I don't remember what the fuck it was. But, you know, eh. So she's kind of pa pausing and stalling here. 17 by 0. Carefully watching it, um, looking for a short at this point because we're starting to get stuck. And 
not trying i'm kind of chasing it from the back side at this point so instead of hitting the actual spread this market is so poppy and whippy that for me currently it's kind of good to get in several ticks away from where the spread is currently uh trading and if you have no idea what the fuck i'm talking about you should go watch some of my other videos um where i talk about the spread strike zone the strike zone video you should go de definitely go watch the strike zone video um i'll i'll put it in the description if i can fucking remember but uh and then we kind of get in in there right there so i'm really looking for this area to really bang out right here and there it goes we're gonna pull that that's an automated target but i i rarely go for that all that is simply is is telling me that's a two to one to my stop out so my stop out coming is 12 ticks these days uh and i know that roughly in this area this would be a two to one even though i'm not really getting stopped out very free often um cutting by hand as much as possible and then i'm working the targets by hand as well so we're kind of bottom ticking right here just watching it we're still holding it this is a fucking beautiful fucking trade um the moment i start to see it struggle it could snap back really hard so we're gonna pull it um as soon as we start to see that hesitation now i am still looking for this to kind of drive down i'm gonna give this benefit this pullback the benefit of the doubt it's not quite a bottom tick anymore then you got a well now that's not a three by zero so i'm just watching it so i think i pulled the trade right about in this somewheres in here now we're still sitting pretty but i don't like the way these uh big buy orders came in and the market just jerked up that aggressively uh what that's telling me is those offers are kind of weak in that section so we'll kind of rewind it watch the tape here rewind it a little more than that so watch the tape here watch how it just jerks up so violently right there that's not good that's telling me that it's kind of weak and there there is the potential of this thing slamming up still gonna w let it kind of hold it a little bit here we got a nine by zero 10 by zero 22 by zero um and again now we're bottom ticking we pull the whole clip right here so there was obviously liquidity sitting at this zone the liquidity is gone but notice how the price action was jerking on it so what that's telling me is they're still interested in that zone and there is liquidity still being provided there but more so in the form of reloading or iceberg orders uh because this market is substantially thinner than it's ever been well not like covid that was fucked up but i mean as you saw in that other video i mean it was like 300 on each bid and offer so uh what they have to do these days is since the es is a lot thinner they got to cut the orders up now and um you're going to get a lot more jerkiness and a lot more chopping uh so it, it's definitely a different approach a different game more volatility more chop than it's had many years ago and this is a prime example of how market conditions shift and they can permanently shift and how it takes you more than a year to learn how to trade and get consistent at it because um if you're good in one environment and it shifts like this you don't know how to trade that so uh shifting conditions are require different approaches and a lot of people i'm noticing are getting fucked up because it's super duper choppy and nobody's really able to get shit to really run uh, without the trade coming back now i mean there are people doing it yes i mean but how big is your risk and for me 12 ticks it ain't shit and 12 ticks can come back like nothing and that's 600 bucks man that's quite a bit of dough so for me to tr trade that kind of size i can't be running that type of risk and i'm a scalper at heart that's just what i am and that's what i'm good at so uh now's the time to do that uh but anyways let's continue so let's look at the p l so we just saw this is beautiful trade one by 28 uh mae to mfe if you're not familiar with mae is that's how many ticks it went against you um while you put the trade on and this is how many ticks it went in your favor while the tr trade was on so this is really your true risk to reward when the trade was active 
Um, you can calculate all that bullshit in your fucking head. Oh, I'm going to take three to ones. Yeah, but again, market dynamics are constantly shifting and you got to learn how to understand shifting expected value in the trade. Uh, EV shifts because, uh, again, shit changes just because you think it'll go to a target and it may be good. Things start to happen while it's going to target. And if the buyers are buying and you're short and it's it's not going well, then then the the expected value of that trade is shifting on you. And this is why trade management is so critical. Simply putting out a stop and a hard target is not trade management. It's fucking not. Okay. So we're out of the trade. Um So notice we have quite a few up arrows in this region. So that's kind of interesting. Um, and this next trade is going to be a nice little win as well, a 475. She should be coming up soon. Um, just tracking the market. Another complete right there. So this is interesting. To me, this is telling me this might actually reverse and puke up. Notice how the market is jerking up right there. There's the puke up. I didn't take advantage of it. But what what's interesting is there can often be times where I'm pretty confident. Now, here's the thing. never There's never a point where I'm like, it's going to. It's going to do this. It's going to do this. I always think in the perspective of it could do this, it might do this, there's a high probability of it doing this at this moment. Because the thing is, it might not. So I've trained my brain to not go, it's going to go up. There's going to be a stop run here because when you do that, you're forcing an opinion on the market and the market, it has randomness to it. It really does. But the thing is, yes, I was pretty confident that there was going to be a puke right there, which happened. We can go ahead and just, I guess, watch it again. Um, so there, here's the puke right here. And, and just the way it is trading and dancing on the DOM. So, you know, just because I didn't actually take advantage of that doesn't mean that information isn't important to me. There's a lot of areas I don't trade. I'm not willing to trade. But what's happening in there on the order flow, the depth of market, and the actual price action itself um, on my three-second chart. And by the way, this is a three-second chart, the Auction Vista. And that is Jigsaw Depth of Market on the right. Uh, if you guys want to save $30, I do have an affiliate link in the description below. Uh, save yourself $30 on Jigsaw if you've been considering buying that. I would appreciate that. It actually does help the channel because, honestly, I don't make shit off fucking YouTube. I really, this, this video is going to take fucking forever to make. It already took forever to set up the fucking lights and the microphones. And then I got to edit it and all this other bullshit and thumbnail it and all that crap. I don't get paid enough for this shit. That's why I'm so inconsistent with YouTube. I'm attempting to get an editor to help me with this type of shit. Um, I'm working on that. I do have somebody. Some of you have reached out. I appreciate that. Uh, but that would definitely, I'd be more inclined to actually getting more shit done as far as YouTube goes. But I am simply do not make enough off YouTube for me to even want to do this shit. So I do apologize for the inconsistent uploads we also have renovated the studio as you can see everything's green i'm not done with it i'm still building shit out around me to try to take everything to the next level there's definitely going to be more content i will be creating paid content at some point a, a course if you will i'm working with somebody on it when will that be released i don't fucking know it's going to take a long time because i can't put out a piece of shit uh, and I, I really am lacking a lot of time. So don't ask me when that's going to come out, but it is in the works. The studio renovation, which costs a fucking truckload of money, uh, is f for YouTube and the, the, that type of material. So yes, there's going to be paid material and I've been talking about it for fucking ever. So finally something's happening, right? 
and that paid material is going to give me an incentive to actually do YouTube. I do enjoy you doing YouTube, but this is another fucking job. And again, 300 bucks off ad revenue a month. Go fuck yourself. That is not worth it to me. So I just sit here and spend all this time and I have a life outside of this shit. So I want to go live that fucking life too. So that's kind of where we're at. I know this is a bit of a rant and shit mid fucking breakdown or whatever, but you know, those of you really considering jigsaw, there you go. I do have a coffee as well. If you just don't even want to buy anything, that's fine. But if you want to donate, please donate to the coffee. Whatever you want to donate is fine. The minimum is three bucks. I appreciate the fuck out of that. Um, and I hope you guys appreciate the shit out of this. Please like and subscribe. God, I sound like a fucking one of those motherfuckers. But you know what? I got to do it. Um, but, I mean, come on. This is... You're seeing trades on the hard right edge. And I'm fucking showing you some good fucking shit here, guys. So, uh, and again, we pl I plan on doing more of this type of shit in the future. Uh, the only difference is if this was paid material, I would break it down substantially more. And it could take us hours just to get through all of these trades. So that's where the paid content comes in. And then I would explain all these techniques and there's certain techniques I ain't even explaining. There's certain things that are happening that I'm not explaining to you guys. So I, I got to save it for that type of shit, but this is just a kind of a fun video guys. Hopefully we can learn a little something here. Uh, but again, here we go. Um, stuff on the hard right edge guys. This is great. Uh, and, and my thinking as it's happening, you know, a lot of people do this shit in hindsight and, and that's not good enough. I think, I think, I think that's what's made this channel so good is showing you guys this and we're kind of we're going back to those roots here, you know what I mean? So if you guys really like this, tell me in the comments. So she's creeping back up. So what what we can notice here is there is a bell curve forming as you can see. So um this is pulling back to the mean well, this is kind of the point of control at this these 51s right now for this lower curve. We got to we got to complete here. Just tracking these arrows. This area is going to be more import important to me because this is more of a major pivot than these arrows up here. But these ar uh, arrows up here can still potentially contribute. Now, there are times where I erase them. There's times where I ignore them. Again, that's not this video. So... We get a 10 by 0 up there. They, did, they were not willing to take that 500 lot. Uh, and, and that's a thing, guys. Just because you see a large number sitting on the bid or offer doesn't mean the price is going to go to it. It can often fail and rotate on it. Same thing with, like, major psych numbers, like the price of, say, 4000 even or 4100 or 3900 The market could very well rotate a few ticks before that. That does happen. So that's... What I'm saying in, in the terms of when I called out that stop run earlier, it doesn't have to do this. It could, though. There m might be a high probability of it doing that. And, a, and another major component to a lot of this is I'm remembering what's happening. What did the order flow look like here? So it's, I'm simply not trading by the seat of my pants. All these rotations, everything that's happening on the DOM, the tape, everything is context and i'm building a narrative in my head i'm building out a story and i am trading that story and that's a huge misconception with scalping especially my scalping it's not to be picking up a few ticks i am attempting to always hit something that has the potential of going i don't want these three tick four tick moves it's not good enough especially in these conditions I'm trying to hit something that could potentially lead into a bigger picture idea. Um, but I'm more apt to being aggressive today in this environment. And uh, there's there's so much nuance to the trading. My trading is extremely nuanced, ex extremely complex because there's so many moving components. And I've talked about this before. Anybody that says... If you really have, I, I've heard this before. If you have trading edge, you should be able to explain it in a couple sentences. That is a load of dog shit because if that was true, 
then the failure rate wouldn't be so high. Trading is excruciatingly nuanced. One guy who I'm actually, you know, I was on a Mike Bellafury thing for a while. I hyped him up all the time. And he'll be back. I know some of you have asked where he's gone. He'll be back on the wall. Trust me. That That is my dad after all. Um, and if this is your first episode, you have no idea what I'm fucking talking about. Lance Breitstein, he's with SMB Capital. Go to SMB's channel and look up all the videos about Lance Breitstein. He does talk about EV and expected value. So if you want to understand more of that, go watch that. That is definitely for more advanced traders. And just a lot of things Lance has talked about has really pushed my trading to the next level for free. Um, and there are times where he, I've heard him talk about how nuanced trading is. Trading isn't simple, and my trading is pretty fucking complex. Uh, I mean, it's not, like, super hard. Not for me, at least, but that's because I have six fucking years. This month is my six-year anniversary of doing this shit. So, um... But to try to show you guys all the little things and why I'm scalping today or, or whatever, it's it, there's just so much to it. Um, so, but I'm never looking for this little bullshit. And, and again, it's so important to build out context and a narrative and watch how the price is reacting everywhere. Even if I don't want to trade there because that is telling me something. And... It allows me to find potential areas of momentum, potential areas of stop runs. And traders often ask me, how do you find stop runs? This isn't the video, but I do want to talk about stop runs. Stop runs come in different forms. They're not just one. There's not just one way to find a stop run. There's so many different ways stops get triggered. And sometimes the stops can actually chain react into other stop zones. I do have other videos that talk about stop runs a little bit. It's not the topic. Don't know which videos they are. So that's, I mean, a lot of, uh, uh, th this entire channel is really good, guys. Come on. Um, So let's continue to watch it. We are at 8.38 a.m. I just, so the next v trade is going to be this f this 11 tick run. Um, so notice the market is stalling here. We're getting a lot of stall in this section. So that's interesting. We get a lot of stall. There's that liquidity. They didn't pull it. Um, and again, it doesn't have to go there. Notice how it's getting stuck here. We got a 39 by zero, but no, here's the thing. It's sort of embedding here. So this may not be good and it could actually blow through there. So we're not getting quite a good of enough pullback. I think I actually might erase that arrow. If I don't, then I don't. Um, but watching it after the fact, I should be erasing that. I don't. So we get a 12 by zero. That's okay. And then it, I'm going to erase that because there wasn't a good enough pullback that they jerked it. So yes, it can go... 12 by zero or whatever, but if it if it's not pulling back enough, and how many ticks is that? Well, it depends on the volatility, okay? Um, there's, now she's hitting this area, um, and notice it goes six by zero. This is the fourth arrow I, I place in here. So this is very interesting. Um, and now we have more of a, beautiful looking curve at least from this 54 down to the 48s and because of that nice curve and the way it kind of bled right here to me there's a high probability and i don't remember what happens here guys i'm just now reviewing this um for me there is a decent probability of it reverting at least to 51s but she's stalling here which is interesting i think there's that revert to 51. And then we erase that zero because there was a complete. And w what I also like about actually tracking it by hand and placing them there. Yes, you could look at a footprint, but that's a whole nother video. And that I would probably talk about in paid material, to be honest with you. Because th there's such a deep dive on why a footprint shouldn't be used. But the problem with a footprint is... Ah, I'll just fucking tell you guys now. 
The problem with a footprint is they are time-based and a new footprint is created every five minutes or whatever you set it to. And the problem, and, and the market really, all it does is go up and down. So instead of looking at all these zeros staggered, it like fucks with my eyes. It's just easier to do it here. And again, this, this is a footprint. So why look at another chart if it's already here? And I like to do this by hand because it keeps me engaged with the market. Uh, it gives me something to do. So instead of like over trading, I actually am doing stuff. So I'm actually working, which is good. And it keeps me engaged. And then you have all the, 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 these uh, arrows, um, you know, placed here. And, and the thing is that footprint, you know, it could still be in a cycle of a footprint. And the only zero you guys would have seen was down here. But for me, it's important to track uh, these other areas where it did pivot and shit and it put in zeros. Yes, those areas did get wiped out, but I do notice that um, when you have a bunch of arrows stacked like that, depending where they're at structurally, that is a really high probability area of getting stop run or potentially pivoting. So it's... Once it gets tested so many times, if it comes back, there's a high probability of a stop run. And I actually think I do take a short and catch the stop run here. I don't remember, um, but it, it would be better if I could do a dedicated video again. That would be like paid content or some bullshit. So, um, but th there's kind of the gist of it, really. <clears throat> so, still tracking shit. Now these arrows kind of in the bulk of, in the middle of that profile really don't matter that much even though I'm still tracking but notice notice something interesting here we have mostly we have four down arrows yes there's an up arrow and yes this one shouldn't exist but it does uh we have four arrows here and four arrows here and it's starting to get pinned up in this section um so at some point it's going to find one of these areas and puke it Hopefully. That's if the volatility can maintain. Sometimes it could just get stuck there and grind for fucking ages. So now she's starting to hit. So it looks like it might actually start to puke this low, but she's getting stuck through this area. I want to carefully watch it to make sure it doesn't rotate in this area. Um, and we have a complete there, zero by three. Probably going to not count that. And there we go. Through it again. So I don't count that. And again, there's other things going on that I am not explaining. Other techniques. Um, so I do see it stop running this area because, I mean, why is it going to stop run this area? Because it pivoted down here three fucking times and it's not getting through there. So th since we have a small bell curve here, it... It, it, there's a high probability of it actually testing uh, beyond this upper pivot. Uh, so I'm taking advantage of it. I notice that's there. I notice the way the momentum has shifted, the way the order flow is. So for me, that is worth a stab at it. <clears throat> and there's hopefully, and then they, there's that liquidity gets swept up and somebody actually takes it. Again, we're starting to roll there just to scalp. Just to scalp, guys. <laughs> um because uh we have other arrows up here and vwap i don't know if vwap's gonna roll the motherfucker and if you look on this chart you probably can't see shit because it's so small but there's a blue line that aligns with vwap so there's in conjunction with these arrows so for me that could be a potential roll zone so now we're definitely sitting pretty for the session again just because we're getting whacked in off the bat <clears throat> doesn't mean we can't turn it around so we're gonna look at the next trade which is the 750 dollar win which should be setting up here soon <clears throat> and just kind of watching notice how she's kind of rotating here 13 by 0 39 by 0 okay that doesn't matter anymore Now, 
very jerky. Notice how it's just jerking through here. Still just watching it very carefully. Not sure what it's going to do here. Zero by seven. And that was an area that was holding the market up. Now it's kind of flipped it. Okay, now they're actually printing it. Did I walk away to go take a shit or a piss or something? Because uh, nothing was moving. <clears throat> Must have not been paying attention. Now we're tracking it. Um, again, we're going to just continue to watch the footage. Six by zero, seven by zero, eight by zero, but it looks like it's going to press it. And as the session goes on, like these really good scalps aren't existing. The more it trades through all of this area, the less good they are, in my opinion. Um, what it's doing is it's multi-cycling somewhat. <clears throat> So now notice this. I'm really interested in this area. This is where we stop ran it. But now we're starting to push back into that area. So if it starts to actively bust through this area, there is a high probability of these arrows or this low getting blown the fuck out if it can reach that. Now anything can happen between these arrows and these area, arrows. We don't know. That's why we manage the trade. But I'm watching this very carefully because it did blow it out, but it's coming back in. Now, it could pivot here and go back up. So for me, this is a more of a pivotal spot. Five by zero, so she's kind of holding there, but she's not really blowing out. She's struggling to get up. And notice how it climbed up slow, but then it slammed back down. Let's go ahead and rewatch that real quick. And and the paid material, this is where I would be rewinding it and really breaking it down more. But this video is going to be long enough to edit. And I ain't going to make but fucking three bucks off the motherfucker. So, <clears throat> unless you guys donate. So, there's a slam. Again, like I don't care enough to just really break it down. Hold on. But I'll do it right here for you guys. So she's struggling to go up, struggle to go up, struggle to go up. This is a dance. This is the dance, the way it's just struggling here with a clean slam. So that's telling me the bids might be potentially weak here and it may actually let go. <clears throat> so 12 by zero. Now, is it going to get pin here? I know it could potentially rotate 51. <clears throat> So I'm p paying close attention because if it doesn't rotate and it can get stuck in these 52s, then I'm, there we go, a three by zero, 52.75. Now the trade seems on on the short side. Yeah, there we go. Um, and I again, I don't remember exactly where I placed this. I didn't rewatch this footage. This is a, tr I just like, I consume so much data and information my brain just dumps the fuck out of it and um i don't really have the best of memories so i don't remember this bullshit <clears throat> but what i'm doing is just kind of like reliving the moment right now so i guess past fat cat agrees with present fat cat so i think this was a good little uh hit right here a nice little lick um, nice slam right through there too, man. Ooh, baby girl. Come on now. Pull that because that's our rough two to one. We, we flat the trade because she's instantly slapping back. And typically when you have a hard drive like that, it can immediately hit it back. Because again, this market is excruciatingly choppy these days. So we don't pull it at the lows, but we do pull enough of it that we do make a good lick on it. That was a $750 win. And look, she comes all the way back. So this is exactly why we scalped. This is exactly why we scalped. I know when it when it does that and it reverses that fucking hard, I know there's a high probability of it coming back. I, I, and this is where experience is so important because the fuck is this your first week or first month of trading? You don't fucking know that. 
Okay. Um, so, yeah, there you go. So now we're going to look at the next deal here, which will be this uh, little $300 win. And then we give that back and then we get it back. So, and then we get the $450 clip. And then at that point, I'm actually starting to get tired. And we're at the top of the hour. Um, and, and I'll just go ahead and address it now before I forget. I know that at, so this is a tremendous amount of work. What you're seeing, the amount of focus and just the way I'm doing it and being fast about it because I have to be fast because that's where my edge is. Um, it's a lot of work. This is very mentally taxing and I don't have this endurance where I can just go all fucking day. And the best volatility really is in the morning on the open. And, and I statistically perform the best within the first 30 minutes. And I'm happy. Like at this point, you know, picking up 2,700 bucks or whatever the fuck, I'm happy. So for me, it's, 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 you know, it, it's good. So um, let's just continue because I got ADD and I'm listening to music and it stopped and I had to press play. So I don't even remember what I was talking about. If I can't even fucking remember what the fuck I was just talking about, I, I don't remember this shit. So this is, I kind of do, but so nice little lick right there. I mean, that would have been, you know, I would have had to manage the fuck out of the motherfucker. I don't know what I'm doing here because I'm obviously sitting idle at this point. So let's fast forward it a little bit. Oh, I was taking notes on the trade. So uh, that's another thing. If you guys want to save 30 bucks on Jigsaw, again, link in the description. Uh, use the coupon code FATCAT. But Jigsaw, what's badass about Jigsaw uh, is it has a built-in kind of uh, journaling software. And I was currently tagging uh, the trades in there. If you guys want to know more about tagging, Go ahead and watch my first episode of my coaching uh, session uh, with Slim Trady. We talk a lot about tagging. So currently during this session, I am taking brief notes on each trade and just kind of writing shit up. Um, and I just find that to be very beneficial. Uh, so that way I don't have to spend all this time reviewing the footage and going, wait, what was this? Why did I do that? Uh, I just find that very beneficial. So trade tagging and the journaling and the report cards, that's all very important shit. And I talk about all of this in the coaching sessions, which those videos don't seem to be super popular because they're not sexy. But if you want to reach this level, that shit is more important than this shit. You guys ain't going to learn shit from this. Yeah, you're going to learn a little something here or there, what drawn arrows or whatever the fuck. But again, there's so much more to it than that. Come on. So, was making a note there in journal ticks on every trade actually, <clears throat> and it and what's also good about that, and this is where what I you know it gives me a moment to actually reflect what I just did. Did did what I do? Did what I just do? Was that good? Um, and I'm having these brief moments of reflection, and it's no different than what Tiger Woods did. That's why he was so good at golf is when he would practice swinging the shots during practice or whatever, he, he's actively thinking about his posture, how he can grip the club better. Is he swinging his hips just right? I don't fucking know shit about golf, but I assume it's all in the hips. Uh, if you guys ever seen Happy Gilmore where <laughs> Chubbs grabs Happy and he's kind of like behind him in a very provocative stance there and he's grabbing him by the hips and just swinging it's all in the hips it's all in the hips it's all in the hips so was my hips swinging well on this motherfucker so it's one thing when you take a shot and you don't reflect on it you're really fucking yourself it's very important to really reflect on everything you're doing in trading every little detail you must reflect on it because if you just shut your mind off and just trade, you're wasting time. I can get more out of a 30-minute session than you could in a fucking five-hour session. Because I am reflecting 
reviewing all this bullshit. I am, I am just really aware and paying attention to every fucking thing that's going on within myself, the way I feel. And, and, and again, I step out cause I get real tired in the session. I'm not a morning person. So I, I feel fatigue kicking in. So I've, it's taken me a long time to build the awareness out to go, Hey, fat cat, you're tired. Let's get the fuck out of here and keep our capital. So, uh, um, there's just so much going on that you guys are just not seeing. That's why I'm saying that my trading is ex extremely complex. You guys need to understand this whole psychological bullshit that's going on as well. So let's continue to watch. <clears throat> Margaret is dancing here. <clears throat> kind of at a weird spot, I would say. Market slamming down. We get a complete at 5125. We're going to mark it, but that's not really a good one because it is right in the middle of this high noted area. So, where these completes are in conjunction with actual profile structure actually fucking matters. So, so that's the thing. I know some of you guys are going to take this method and try to apply it after this video, and it's not going to work <clears throat> for you. Just letting you know. So, I mean, if you want to fuck with it, that's fine. But it ain't gonna, you ain't going to get it to work the way I do it because you don't understand the nuance to it. Because it, it fits into a trading system. And unless you know that actual trading system as a whole, then you're going to totally fuck it. Now, could you use it and fit it to your system? Yes. <clears throat> So I think a lot of these arrows between 53 and 51 are shit at this point because the profile is getting bulky there. Trading midpoints on a profile like this are really choppy as fuck and the RR isn't there. The risk to reward is not there, so. I do eventually erase them. And we're just going to continue to watch. Again, we're watching this... Um, without fast forwarding, none of that bullshit, just in the moment, what I'm thinking, there is nothing here. There is absolutely nothing here. There, I don't care. The market is moving. I have no edge here. So she's just chopping nothing here. And again, yeah, this isn't sexy. You probably want to be like, Ooh, let me see the trade. That's fine. Go to the link in the description and or whatever, and you can go to the jump to each trade entry if you want to do that. But what that tells me is you're not patient and you can't, if you're not patient and you want to see the trade, well then, you know, you need to be able to be patient through this type of shit. Because if you're not patient and you want to fast forward through this video, well then you're probably going to over trade. And you, you're not going to learn how to sit through this type of shit. And you're not going to learn how to disengage. When to be aggressive, when to disengage, when to re-engage. Now we're getting something. Good puke on good buying too. Watching this. Now we did get a double tap right there with the arrows. This one sh doesn't really count. But this is still an interesting area. They bang it. Still watching very carefully. And in this moment, I don't know what it's going to do. I guess I'm reviewing it. So back to the mean. We bounce the mean. Can we bounce the mean or are we going to revert the mean? Which is all this bullshit down here. We get an 8 by 0. They take it. Probably get rid of that. And yes, I'm a bit sloppy with the arrows. They don't have to be super precise, right? That one should have been erased, but it wasn't. Who gives a shit? Uh, tracking the like this, this isn't some foolproof method, by the way. There's so much other shit going on. <clears throat> Again, it's just a technique that fits into a system, and the system has to be traded as one unit. You can't just trade s simple techniques and expect to be good at this. So now we're back in the mean. 
We did, I think, that 5325. I should flip it to an up arrow. Back in this area, and again, it could really chop. And I'm actually on the edge of my seat because I'm very interested in what's going on. I don't know what to think. It's just kind of, okay, we're back in the mean. Now we're shoving here. <clears throat> kind of a rotation here. A lot of this shit doesn't matter. Now I'm deleting them because that, that's right in the middle of the mean, and that's what I said. At some point, they become bullshit, and they become useless because the, the market dynamics are always shifting. The expected value of things are always changing, so they're no longer valid. They were valid at one point. You saw me hit a stop run through them on the upside, but just because that worked then doesn't mean that it will work now. So... So we're kind of just getting rid of that shit. Now the stuff down below in the 48s does, does is still valid because that is the low of the session. And there's so many arrows there as well. So yes, we're kind of tracking in that area still, but <clears throat> there's reasons for that. Um, get a three by zero, 53, 50, nine by zero. Now that I actually s slip it. Good buying too. What also this mid tape they bought here and then it immediately slams down. So the bids are kind of weak in this section. And that's the thing about uh, the center section of profiles. The bids and offers tend to pull a lot on both sides. So you start getting a lot of this slipping and that type of pulling in the way it's slipping there is what's contributing to the profile building uh, that lump in the center. <clears throat> There's more to it than that. Six by zero fifty four. So, still watching it, still tracking it. So all I'm doing is tracking. There's no, I don't really know what to do other than these arrows down here. How do they hit that? Nine by zero. Okay. Now here's what. What? Okay. Now. Okay. Here's the thing. That was a decent enough pullback. It did go nine by zero. If it starts getting in here and getting stuck, then there's a high probability of it actually starting to stop run uh, these bottom arrows. Um, <clears throat> but we just don't go short, right? Every little tick matters. Every piece of order flow coming in matters. The way the DOM moves matters, okay? Um, how far it goes away from this arrow Verse, if it goes further away, then it's not the same trade. Then if, like, if I'm looking for a specific type of pullback before I make the move, before I get into the trade, um, depending on how far that pullback goes, changes the dynamic of the tra trade substantially. If I'm looking, like, if I'm looking to take a trade and I'm, I, I'm there, there might the criteria of it might only be a small pullback. And if that doesn't happen, then that trade is no longer valid. It is not going, going to be there. Yeah, it could be a bigger pullback and come back. But what I needed to happen on such a very specific, nuanced criteria, if it doesn't happen like that, it's not the same trade anymore. So therefore, we don't engage with it. <clears throat> now, she is chopping here, which is, you know, whatever. Um, I would like to see that this midsection hold, which it doesn't. <clears throat> Completely sweeping. Now, we do have a couple of double arrows here, and there is VWAP here, and that did explode pretty hard, and it's getting stuck, and just like I told you how some of these trades can explode and run, it could start to slam back down here, and this actually kind of looks enticing for a short. Do I go for it here? interesting that stalls interesting huh okay now see she's starting to rise up faster so i do expect this to blow out but if it doesn't blow out and it starts to get stuck here then just that little piece of information is telling me there's a high probability of a mean revert and then a test out of this profile and through the lows. Let's just watch. I don't again I don't remember. There it is, the six by zero. 
slamming down. Should have blown out and it didn't. And because it didn't do what I was thinking it should do is a critical piece of information. When things don't work the way I expect it, that is a very critical piece of information to context building. So, I mean, it's it's a little too close to the mean for me to want to engage with. I honestly thought, looking at it now, I probably didn't see it in that moment, but that would have been a really good attempt. When it went 6 by 0 and the way it slammed in, I think that would have been a good attempt to short it and actually write it through here. Um, yeah, there you go. There, <clears throat> there it is banging. Now, I'd like to see it get stuck in between these arrows. She Look, there's a stop run. Let it come back. Let it come. I'm looking for some sort of pullback. I cannot chase this. Any little pullback I can get. 23 by 0. Can it get stuck in this cluster of arrows? Or is it going to mean revert? It's getting stuck here. That's a good stall. Oh, she's ex puking. But she's stuck under this 50. Watching it very, very, very carefully here. 47 by zero. But if it can keep pressing here, that should puke. But I do not want to see it swing up. This is exactly what I was just talking about a moment ago. I want it to get stuck in this tighter range. If it swings up and comes back, that's a different. But if it can get stuck here and nibble, then it's good. I don't know why I didn't take that. I don't, yeah, I should have took it there, a uh, higher up. We go for it. We actually get filled on an eight lot, uh, which I don't want. I'm trying to clip some of it off, especially since it's stalling here. And it should be, now here's the thing. It should be puking harder than this, and it's not. See how it keeps getting stuck here? This is bad. There's that good puke. Looking for it to drive, and then, then I just pull it there because it needs to go, and it's not going. As a scalper, you should have a clock that starts to tick as soon as you get into the trade. Now, how long does that clock go off for? Well, it depends on the market conditions, the volatility, and the volume flow. Um, this is a more choppier, faster market, so I'm not going to hold it as long. Uh, whereas if the market wasn't super volatile, I'm more likely to actually sit. A lot longer so and it also depends where you where you're getting into the trade contextually like what is the narrative around that entry what what is going on exactly like where are we hitting on the structure and depending where that is depends on how long that clock is going to tick in my head for so we do pull it pick up 300 because it's starting to slap back See in that struggle right there and how it's just stalling. That's not good. Does it continue down? I think it does. But that, that stall is just not good. And we're also hitting uh, the 24-hour VWAP as well, uh, which it could roll. We, we have uh, RTH VWAP and 24-hour VWAP. And when it's kind of when they're kind of spread like this, you tend to get a lot of ping ponging. But that's relatively loose information. I don't take a trade because it's on a view app. I, don't, I just don't. I don't give a fuck. It's just used to generate context. That's it. That arrow doesn't count. So she she should be. She keeps climbing back in. So there's a. There's a potential of a gnarly stop run on the upside if it continues to struggle down like this. So this is kind of how you can identify a stop run, but you shouldn't be fading it, anticipating that. Um, because you'll get fucked up if it just keeps driving down. That's you essentially trying to catch a knife, which isn't a good idea. So, I mean, we got into a prime position, but we cut it. But, you know, whatever. 
We we don't we don't sit there and go, oh, oh, I should have held it. Oh. Cause I know a lot of you motherfuckers do that shit. Oh, sh- <coughs> ah. I also have a cold. So I can't do that. Oh. It hurts. But I didn't. It's over with. What do I do? Think about oh, I should have held it. No! Where's the next fucking good trait? So that's what we're doing. Instead of fucking living in fantasy land. And a lot of you are guilty of that bullshit. You didn't fucking know. You can't predict the fucking future like that. I reacted to a stall and that was a good call. I don't care if it kept going. Now, there are times where I know I shouldn't cut a trade and then I prematurely cut it. That's a problem. Now she's starting to get squared up in here. Starting to kind of range ever so slightly. Look, she's just not going for that liquidity on 40. There it is. But then it snaps back to that 40 because there was liquidity there. Now that 40 could pull it back, but no. Weak offers. And then it's going to stall here and then push up, most likely. Most likely. There it is. Good. You got this buying coming in, and it's all retail. I'm not seeing heavy selling and it's stalling here. This sh- should be driving to 40s. And I kind of have a, a small curve here as well. There's that drive in. So what are those S's? Well, I ain't talking about that. That's just I'm not giving everything away. So... Banging out right here. There we go. I'm watching it carefully. Road 17 by 0 up there. Mark it. <clears throat> Good job, fat cat. See, I'm not sure what's going on here, so we don't trade situations when we're not sure. And this video is almost done, so. Uh, So this area with the 42s is very enticing and interesting. I want to know what it does here, and it's not slamming through it. I'm kind of looking at it like I'm really trading. So if you guys kind of pay attention to the way I'm sitting here and shit. Triple complete. So this completed down here multiple times. So right here is a really good spot that there could be a stop run and massive amounts of, well, not just a stop run, but the bids could pull there too. But this area held multiple times with, uh, whatever 19 by zero or whatever on each of these tests <clears throat> 52 by zero a bit of a top tick there um i think i go for the short I think I go for a short ride around here. Because I do anticipate a blowout right there. (coughs) Oh, excuse me, guys. See how choppy she is? You can get real fucked up in this. (laughs) 
very interesting. It's a different type of game at this point. Different. Right there. Attempt. She's not selling. This is bad. Look at the dance, the dance. I can see why hitting there was kind of a bad idea. Oh, she's not going. And all that buying right there that hit the tape, that's not good. There's a short. See and it, see it. Watch how it's just dancing above the entry. That is very bad. And then all that blue tape comes in and then it starts running. It's, it's just time to get the fuck out of it. We pull it. So uh, what you just saw there was the um, <clears throat> this this loss. We re we re grab it and then we hit up on the next one. So re re attempting re engaging very good re engage love it beautiful re engagement. Now I'm looking for the drive through this harder than that, and it's not. I'm looking for a better puke. There's that free peak I was telling you guys about where I believe it's going to blow through there. <clears throat> Ooh, 14 by zero. Big selling, and it's coming up. That is bad. And see how she's dancing here? And it, it needs to go. We're giving it some moments to breathe, but it, it needs to get pulled. They're just selling coming in. They are not fucking driving it. This stall is gnarly. I'm. It's so close to the lows, though. It doesn't have to hit the lows. Pull it. F flat key, I believe. So, um, that was a good pull, I believe. Let's see what happens at this point. <clears throat> And this market is just out to hunt stops too, man. So it looks like she's still stalling here. I mean, I guess I guess it's still on deck, but I mean, it's just jerking here so much that if it does put another tap here, there is a higher probability of it blowing out. And now you're starting to get buyers hitting. There she drives. Get a complete down there at 3850. That's good. <clears throat> so she's not. This is there. There's a. I'm telling you, if it taps here, it could puke it. I wonder if I go for that. I don't know if that's a long or not. But she's still coming in. Okay, she's still coming in. So we're going to re engage the short. There it is on the short. And it's because there's a cluster of three arrows here as well. And, and she's actively not going. And then I believe we just, we pull off two there and then we pull the rest because it's starting to come back so aggressively. Um, that is the last trade. I don't know if it blows up and out. I think it does. Let's just take a look at that. Um, I'm gonna just, that's the last trade right here. There should be a puke up. Yep, there it is. Not that good of a puke. And then the video ends there, I cut it. Uh, because I, at that point I was feeling tired. Um, the trading was good. And I mean, it was a good call to, to pull it there because it, I mean, it comes in. I mean, shit. But uh, that was excellent. I mean, I, as you can see, there's the PL. I mean, we, we've come a long way since that other video of a, what, 137 bucks, you know, to 2,700 in 30 minutes, too. You know, if I had the endurance and shit and the mental capacity, God knows what I could do if I could sit here all fucking day but it's just i don't um and i'm uh, you know i'm gonna push myself a little bit but there's a lot of things in my trading i want to accomplish before i really press my endurance like that so i mean there you go that is a scalping session and as you notice i mean the, the whole tempo and the beat of it near those last few trades starts to shift we're not getting these wacky movements it's starting to get all tight and shit and now i'm playing it a little differently at that point so um that's what a scalping session looks like, the updated version. Um, again, guys, please like, subscribe. Feel free to donate to the coffee if you like these videos because I know there's damn near nobody else giving you this type of shit. On the hard right edge from their recorded sessions. 
from the actual session as it opened and telling you what they're thinking and why. Okay, that's that's where this channel is completely fucking unique. That's why this channel is so good in my opinion. So if you guys really appreciate that, give me some fucking love. It doesn't have to be money like the motherfucker. Uh, so until then, uh, I highly suggest you check out the rest of the channel. And we will see you in the next video. Have a good one, guys.